Thank you for having me. Thanks to DigitalOcean and to the, to the whole team. So co-founders of DigitalOcean, class 17 of Techstars Boulder. Uh, class, so class is the number of the class. The Techstars Lisbon last year, number of a class was 164, 165. So, for you so, guys so 17 idea. was a good vintage. It was a good vintage, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sales loft is in there too. <laughs> and um, there is, uh, we have a rank in the website. I don't know if you guys have seen this. So uh, DigitalOcean is rank, ranked uh, second in uh, enterprise value. Uh, I don't know if you know how many companies, but out of uh, n uh, 1,900... Oh, well, well 1900. Sun SunGrid is first, but that's why we have Yancey now. Uh, <laughs> Yancey, if you want to stand up, he's our, he's our new CEO. He's from SunGrid. So, you know, he's got to do it all over again and uh, beat number one. Okay. Because, uh, like racing, if you're not first, you're last. <laughs> yeah, reclaim the title. In, in, in two-way classes, all right? <laughs> so... But most importantly, <laughs> in the words of the people that have worked with Ben and Mozi, as you can already see, the, the three words that I got uh, uh, were more uh, frequent from the feedback that I asked for. That's that they are talkative, <laughs> opinionated, and funny. So that's kind of a context to what hopefully is going to happen next. I would like to start with something that I did. I did a, we did a fireside chat with David Brown as well here in Lisbon um, some months ago. And I started with a kind of just to warm up. Um, specifically, it's good to do with talkative people, just yes or no questions, type questions. So I'm just going to ask quick questions. And you guys just say, um, it's not necessarily yes or no, but um, you're going to get it. So let's start with um, right hand or left hand? Right hand. Right hand. Okay. But you were born a lefty. Born a lefty. <laughs> <laughs> clean or messy? Uh, used to be messy, now clean. Still messy. <laughs> Cats or dogs? Dogs. Both. You go. Uh, rock or pop? Uh, rock. Queen. <laughs> <laughs> Hardware or software? Hardware. Software. <laughs> B2B or B2C? B2B. <sighs> B2D. Oh, I'll, t I'll take that one. Business to developer. Um, growth or profit? <laughs> you know, uh, growth if you can get it, but if you don't, you better have profit. <laughs> R rule of 40. <laughs> I asked the same thing to David Brown and he kind of asked, answered the same thing about the rule of 40. Um, solo founder or co-founders? Uh, like a raw group, five. Five co-founders is better than two. Yeah, co-founders. Okay. Um, was that the first one you guys agreed? Did the same? Yeah, and the, so. okay. yeah, yeah cool. first one. Okay. <laughs> one CEO or co-CEOs? Definitely co-CEOs at this point. <laughs> <laughs> one CEO who's not Ben. <laughs> <laughs> and last question, uh, manual or automatic gear? Automatic, uh, dual, uh, dual clutch. Uh, LMP3, sequential manual transmission, best one. <laughs> okay, cool. So um, I'll just uh, transition that into more open uh, questions. Um, I heard that you guys are passionate about cars. Is that true? That's this gentleman. Okay. I, I am a little. Um, and so can you just talk a little bit about when that started and what led to that passion? Uh... I like cars. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't think anything actually led to that passion. It's just I always loved cars. Um, but I, I think what's funny is that DigitalOcean wouldn't exist unless I made a bad decision about getting my first car. Because me and Ben were working at a company together. And it was already going out of business. And they stopped paying us salary. And I had just dropped out of college. And I had no money. And I decided to get my first car. And I had to pay for the lease and the insurance. And then that company went out of business. And then we had to start our own company to, uh, to do that. And then that company didn't work out because Ben couldn't run the network. And then we went home. And we're sitting at home. 
and we have the servers. We told all the customers we can't get you online. This guy's like, oh, we'll go on vacation and figure it out. And I was panicked because I thought, well, I can't have my mom pay for my car because, you know, our parents were divorced. She was a single mother raising us. So I was like, I can't have her pay for my car. I got to figure this out. And that's why I decided to get one server online with a friend of ours who actually happens to be in the audience, Alex, right there. Uh, so I, we called up Alex and said, hey, can we put a server in your data center? And he said, yeah. And then Ben turned to me and said, well, if we could put one server in there, why don't we put all the servers in there? And so we emailed all the customers back and said, never mind what we said. We will get you online in three hours. Um, we did that, and the first company was born, and that eventually gave rise to DigitalOcean. So I believe that you should always make bad decisions about purchases that drive you right to the edge of financial insolvency, because... <laughs> That's when the creativity gets increased. Now, for, for funding, that means raise less money because you'll be more creative. If you raise more money, you'll be less creative. I like cars. <laughs> well, uh, let me just build on that very quickly. So what do you take from car racing, because you do car racing, into building a company? Uh, it's, uh, it's a lot easier <laughs> in car racing. Uh, I think the most interesting thing about car racing is that we have uh, a tremendous amount of data. So whenever we do any laps in the car, we'll have data about how fast we're going, steering input, throttle, gas. The best part about it is that you also know what your competition is doing because everybody's on the track at the same time, so you see their lap times. And you know you have a coach, or you should have a coach if you're smart, and then he'll drive the car and then you'll see exactly where you're slower and where you have to improve. And I wish business was more like that because the data that we have in business is not as accurate as what you get from driving a car on a racetrack. And also, you don't have that same perfect visibility into your competition the way you do at the racetrack. And also, at the racetrack, it creates a better environment where if you're not pushing it 100%, it's basically a waste of time, which is kind of how a startup is. If you're not committed to it or working at 100%, um, you're probably not in love with what you're doing. Cool. So, uh, question for you, Ben. And um, just, I, I forgot to mention this. I didn't come up with any question, so I asked people that have worked with you and know you for more than five years, and I just selected the questions from all the questions that I got, both people that know you from Techstars and DigitalOcean. So, talking about maybe your passions, um, and I, I when, so I'm a former founder, um, um, when I started the company I had one child, had two kids while um, building the company. How did being a parent uh, influence you as a CEO? Yeah, that's a good question. It was a uh, really interesting timing because there was like an office uh, bet on what's coming first, my, uh, my daughter, my firstborn, or the term sheet from Andreessen. Now, to be fair, Andreessen did send us a couple of term sheets uh, prior to that, but they weren't good enough. I rejected them and told them, you know, you got to bring this, this price point substantially higher. Uh, so I think, you know, that it was actually the third one that we were expecting. And so, um, you know, Andreessen's term sheet did come in first. Uh, my daughter was born nine hours later. It was a pretty uh, momentous day, January 12th of uh, 2014. It's pretty awesome. Uh, I think, you know, really the kind of the work-life balance is what shifted the most. It's pretty obvious, but uh, prior to that, you can pretty much say that I was a workaholic. I, I to, to an extreme, because I used to, you know, see people like walking around in a park and think to myself like, wow, like these people really have nothing to do. They're just walking around in a park and like wait, wasting time. I like, I, I can't, I can't do that, right? And then and then I had a kid and I was like, oh my God, it's so nice to be outdoors and like enjoy the sun and, you know, and, and the family and all of that. And so I became much more, I think, tolerable of, of people and their extracurricular activities rather than just trying everybody to get, you know, to get them to give 100% to, to the company that you're building. So I think, you know, work-life balance is a really important thing for all of us to take into consideration, especially when you're building startups. It's super hard work. You know, the first few years, you're, you're probably going to be putting in overtime and, you know, working 110%. Um, but just don't, don't ignore the people that are around you because they're, you know, they're your family, they're your friends. They're going to be there 
whether the company succeeds or, or fails. And I think it's really important. And also, even, even the business that you're building is really ultimately all, all about people. So, uh, you know, a lot of personal development over the years of, of building the company. Cool. Thanks for, for sharing that. And, and just keeping on the family note, um, I'm curious um, how you guys being brothers affected positively or negatively your work at um, uh, Digital Ocean? It went really well. <laughs> we had no arguments. Ben was the CEO because he was obviously smarter, not because he was older. Uh, I, I, think, uh, I think founding teams in general, uh, those that know each other prior to founding a company, they take whatever relationship they have prior and bring it into the company. And if you're fortunate enough to uh, get to the hyper growth phase or the product market fit phase, it's basically just you know pouring gasoline on the fire. So whatever you had before just gets intensified. Uh, for us, uh, that was the opposite of what I said. <laughs> you know, we argued all the time. We brought our past relationship to the to the present from one company to the next. Um, and but the good news is is that we're at the best relationship ever <laughs> that we've ever had. Um, and that was because we we learned at TechStars at. That was because we hit rock bottom. That was because we hit rock bottom. Well, yeah, but you got to like, you know, darkest before dawn. Uh, <laughs> but, okay, we did hit rock bottom, but we found our way out. But we found our way out through coaches, and that's one of the things that Techstar has really imprinted upon us. And when we got to a point where the company was very large and we were really kind of not getting along, we brought in more coaches, and one in particular was Jerry Colonna, who took us on. And um, I can safely say that without him being in the picture working with both of us, me and this guy would probably not be talking to each other. <laughs> so we were pretty bad, but... Uh, but you know the thing is sometimes that conflict creates creativity and creates a push forward. So, you know, you can't change what it was, and uh, I'm just happy that we survived and uh, we actually get along now. <laughs> um, let me just you know I got a, a lot of uh, talked with um, Nicole, Jason, and so I was just going to build on that. Maybe Ben can um, uh, sure. um, talk a little bit about it, and you, you touch on it, uh, uh, Mozi, but. Um, uh, so it's a two-part question, and um, just feel free to answer as, as you want. But um, did you ever had, you know, specifically in the early days, a big enough disagreement that led, you know, to question the, your uh, both or individually continuity at the company? And, and, and I think that what can be super useful for um, our, our audience here is what tools do you use or suggest for people to manage their disagreements when they are building the companies, you know? Maybe when they are at later stage, it's more difficult to get a coach. Maybe it's possible, but if you guys can you know, provide a bit of color of that and uh, suggest some tools, I think that's something super useful. I definitely had my disagreements with, <laughs> with my co-founders. Yeah, I think actually, you know, if you're if you're a later stage business, it's actually easier to, to get a coach because then you have a larger budget, you know, you can kind of just, you know, tuck it in. And it's actually a very healthy thing to do, I'd say, you know, by the time you're over 50 people, it's almost a no-brainer that you should have some outside, you know, guidance and facilitation. I think it's a really healthy thing to bring in that independent perspective. But, you know, going back to the early days and thinking about, you know, I always treated the, uh, the co-founders uh, with, like, intense loyalty and, and trust. So the interesting thing is that it created a very difficult dynamic because we would kind of fight to the death, but that death never meant that you would kick someone out, you know, and, and you would still respect their point of view and everything else. What I would say, you know, in terms of kind of frameworks is ultimately, you know, if you are the CEO, I did have to make a couple of calls um, that are just very definitive and ultimately, you know, after some soul search and you come back, come back to the team, and you tell them like, look, it's either this way or the highway. So it's not so much that I'm kicking them out, but I'm giving them a choice to either sign up and continue on the journey or, or not. You know, like the two examples that I can bring to mind, one actually going through Techstars, um, you know, we, we parachuted into uh, Boulder, Colorado, where we actually most of us were from, from New York. So we're very much out of our element. Um, you're in a class, I, I mean, exactly like this, you know, you have a bunch of other peers, a bunch of other companies, it always looks like, 
your neighbor is doing that much better, they've raised some funding, they have a product out the door, they have customers, they have revenue, you know, and you're, and you're really worried. And so what, what we tried over that summer in 2012 is, you know, pivot into 30 different directions. We were gonna be a monitoring site, we were gonna be a, a, a community site, and those were just actually the same ideas. We also had, you know, a whole bunch of other ones. And then ultimately by the end of the summer, I'm like, guys, wait a minute, we actually never really focused all that much on doing the thing that we came here to build a cloud computing platform. So like, no more talk of pivots. We're, we're doing this, you know, cloud infrastructure business, and we're either gonna succeed or, or fail at that. And, and I think the team really responded well to that. They said, okay, great, um, let's, let's, you know, let's do it. And then just to, uh, you know, up the ante, when we came back to New York, a couple of months went by, and we still hadn't really found our traction just yet. So, you know, um, uh, payroll was kind of difficult to, to, to make and, and I had to come back to the team. I'm like, look, I have some uh, interesting news for you all. Um, basically, I'm not gonna pay your salary anymore, but you should absolutely stick around because the, the company that we're building here is gonna be massive and the equity is gonna make, more than make up for it. And uh, only one of our five co-founders you know, that decided to actually leave. Uh, everyone else stuck around, and you know, they're they're super happy. But even even the one that left, you know, he still left with a portion, so he's doing pretty well. So I think you know, at the end of the day, as a CEO, you want to make you want to make less decisions, but the ones that you make, it's almost like you know, you wake up in the morning, and and you know what the answer is. You just need to be. Uh, I guess like courageous or confident enough to, to stick with that and say look this this is the right decision and uh, and just just go for it um, but at the same time I'm not big on like you know kind of preaching frameworks I think everyone needs to find what what suits them best cool I think that was very valuable I have one last question before we go to Q&A um, I asked uh, what people admired the most uh, in, in you guys and so couple of things that um, stood out uh, were the, and you kind of mentioned these in the, the way you, the five of you um, talked about um, uh, with each other was the intensity and, and the, patch, the passion that you guys put in in everything that you do. So passion and intensity were repeated uh, several times. Um, and, but that also led to a question and um, to what do you guys admire in each other? <laughs> Not my question, but great question. <laughs> While well, you ponder about my awesomeness. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I, I think it's, yeah, I mean, that first part is absolutely true, the intensity and passion. I mean, regardless of how many disagreements we had, uh, not for a moment or a second that I doubt anyone's commitment uh, or intensity to trying to make DigitalOcean a success. I mean, Jeff was, I mean, there's, you have to meet Jeff because there's no words to describe him. Um, we have some nicknames for him, the uh, the cloud father, uh, the, Jeff the immortal, <laughs> I mean, Villager Jeff. Villager Jeff. Uh, he was just a guy that could write insane amount of code with zero sleep uh, and just get stuff done, but also had one of the biggest hearts, and that was probably one of his biggest impacts. You, know, you, you think about it that, yeah, he wrote the entire back end himself, and you think, oh, that's a pretty big contribution, but I think that his impact on the culture with just his heart and talking to us and, and helping us to understand culture that we weren't exposed to, having just kind of worked with each other. So I think his imprint on the culture side actually far outweighed his input on the uh, code side. Alec was just a super smart guy. He was a great mediator for all of the craziness. He was probably the most level-headed, like realistic and optimistic at the same time. Um, and he's just a very smart marketer. I mean, I think that a lot of the stuff that he did uh, just on the back end and the SEO stuff, like stuff that nobody really knew about that he was just kind of put in there and that eventually like gave us great SEO and just managing all the different personalities. Mitch is the eternal optimist. This guy never had a bad day. And you know, if you work with me and Ben back in those days and you never had a bad day, I'm like, I don't know. I mean, that, that was a special individual because we make it easy to have a bad day sometimes. Uh, Yancy, you're lucky. <laughs> 
Um, but no, but Mitch was absolutely one of the nicest, again, biggest hearted people. And, and he's also a person that always wanted to put things together, like team wise. So again, a person that had a huge impact on the culture of just really putting people first and always having a smile on his face, no matter how hard things got. And Ben, you know, he's the guy I give the least amount of credit to because I'm his younger brother and I got to do that. I'm in competition with him. But in hindsight, <laughs> in hindsight, uh, there's a lot of stuff that he did, which was like what he said, you know, you could have a lot of disagreements, but as a, as a great CEO, um, I, I think that you got to let those disagreements flourish. You have to let the team uh, figure things out and, and find their stride. And you got to make that one important decision or one important call a month, a quarter, a year, or whatever it is. And, you know, pretty much a, a lot of those he made, right? I mean, you know, he told us after we were writing code nonstop, hey, can you guys ship something? I'm like, okay, well, let's do that. Um, you know, when it came time to to raise funding uh, with, for the Series A, you know, he was the one who did all the calls, got on the plane, somehow wrangled an all partner meeting from Andreessen when they didn't want to even talk to us for a follow up meeting. Um, so there's just things like that that he would do in, in, in particular moments that were completely pivotal and instrumental to the company. And like really just saying, okay, we're here and now we need to be here. And I think that is what a great CEO should do is you have to empower the team. And when it's time to make that, <clears throat> make that leap or make that decision or make that push, then you have to come in with that direction of like, here's what we're doing. Um, yeah, that's my point of view. Yeah, no, that's, uh, I like it. <laughs> and uh, I think what Moisey served is exactly the uh, kind of the, the complementary to that. So like, you know, I have a very, I feel like level-headed approach to these things. You know, it, it makes sense in my mind, but I think what Moisey really represented for me was a very, call it a contrarian view. Uh, and usually whenever we would have this kind of debate, you would, you would hear, I would hear Moisey out on some, some point and my initial gut reaction is like, what is this nonsense? Absolutely not, right? And, but then you, you kind of fight it out for a couple of hours, you feel like you're losing the fight, you go home and you sleep on it and by the next day you're like, oh my God, this is, this is genius. And, and then you double down into that new direction. And so I think, you know, we work really well a, as a team to kind of bring the, you know, these, these two different elements, kind of a yin and a yang. And, and that's what I really enjoyed with, not only with Moisey, but the rest of the team as well as that they all brought their own unique element. And, and it was kind of like, you know, really being as part of a, a band, right? Someone's playing the guitar, someone's a singer, someone's on drums, and, and you're making uh, something really big happen. And, and you know, Moisey brought a, ver a very diverse perspective from from everyone else on, on the team. So, uh, you know, really value his view, not only on, on kind of product, but just on the world in, in general, you know. Um, oh, thanks, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. It's um, really appreciate the, the answers and how much you guys shared today here with the whole uh, audience. For me, it's, uh, it was a, an, an honor to uh, do this uh, with you guys. You guys are legends, not only within Techstars, but for all the founders uh, out there. So thank you very much. And uh, can we have a round of applause from everyone? And <laughs>